Chris Cabas at Urine of All 2024. We're with a brand new company only formed in September 2024, Eureka Naval Craft. Now we're speaking with Bo Jardine. He's the CEO of the new company. Bo, you've got a new craft here. This looks like a surface effects craft. What have you got here? So this is a surface effects ship. It is a 36 meter boat uh, by 14 meters. This boat's very unique in the sense of what it can do. So this is a multi-mission platform. It's scalable. Uh, we work and we take a commercial design and we modified it, turned it gray. And essentially this boat is in production today in Singapore at Strategic Marine. We have actually taken and modified it where we've added a notch on each side for picking up special operators, things like that, launch and recovery. And we add a meter to the stern, which essentially brings it one meter so we can carry cargo. Uh, we can carry torpedoes, mines, uh, things like the NSM, NSMs, other missile you know, mission packages. We've also modified it in a way where we did this, we can actually increase the size of the gen set so we can operate energy directed weapons. So lasers, microwave systems, things like that. So say Blue Halo, Epirus, things like those for counter drone. And within the boat though, this boat's very unique in its operating characteristics. So in oil and gas, this was designed for safety of crew transfer offshore. So we can move at very high speeds. And then when we get to places offshore, we're a very stable platform, which means when you transfer that to weapons, that means safer, uh, well, more reliable weapon systems coming off the deck, uh, higher accuracy on all the cannons, the missiles, things like that, less wear and tear. And then in terms of the boat itself, this particular asset, which we call our combatant craft, and I want to say it's not a patrol craft, it's a combatant craft. It's, a, it's almost in its own class because it's not a Corvette, it's not a frigate, it's a little bit of everything. But this boat has a range of 1,000 nautical miles at 38 knots, a top speed of an excess of 50 knots, and these are confirmed details. The other changes that we do in the boat are really around the way that we integrate systems and we do things like that. So a little boat like this, and, and I'll say vessel, because I, I keep saying boat, but it should be vessel, um, usually wouldn't have things like a C2 suite for a command and control, so CIC. We have that on board. It also is a very small crew, even though we have that. So this boat can operate with a crew of five to seven on this particular variant. And then we can carry up to 22 people on board, which means another set of 15 special operators on board. Uh, we can live on this boat for seven to 21 days in the field. Uh, the other thing that's very unique about the boat is when it does operate, because of the air cushion, it has very little, if any, draft. So it draws less than a half a meter of water. And the other thing that it can do is it can beach. All of our vessels can beach. So if you're running an operation and you get into the beach, we can go all the way to the beach. So escorting landing craft, humanitarian things, uh, counter drug enforcement, EEZ enforcement, we can do those things with this vessel. Also within the vessel are um, things that are from oil and gas, thoughts to the nature of the boat, where we actually have designed the hatchways and the corridors to be able to take a Stokes litter. So if you have an injured person, we can get them in. We can convert the interior space to be as a hospital. And if there was say Marines on the beach and they're pinned down and you can't get an aircraft in, we could come in and pick people off the beach and make sure they make the golden hour offshore at a hospital ship or another vessel. So we can do that. This vessel also fits where an LCAC fits in a traditional amphibious ship. So we can actually come into an amphibious vessel to be transported even longer distances and then deploy off that vessel. Within this vessel too, you'll see that we have a lot of other features, including multiple cannon systems. And we actually work with a lot of different OEMs through cannons, radars, other things, but we're non ITAR. That's a very unique thing about our proposition. So what we do is we collaborate, we look at integration of the systems and this particular one that we have on display is a VM Shorad reconnaissance fast attack variant. So we, this would be an example if a client said we had those missions, we would design the boat to meet those missions. Seems like you've been think, doing a lot of thinking about, obviously, customers. The Marines, U.S. Marines are now EABL operations and light littoral operations, a lot of high speed. This seems to fit into that. Are you tailoring it for that? Have you talked to the Marines? Yes, we are tailoring to that. We have talked to the Marines, but we also talked to other nations like Australia. So you have a lot of other people and even the French here, we've spoken to them. We're building a vessel that can fill a lot of missions, but it's also flexible enough that if they need to change, they can change. It's also made so that when they were operate in the field, they don't have to worry about things like, where do I find a spare part? Where do I get these things? We use commercial systems for all the main engines, jet drives, things like that. Access hatches can be done in the field. And this vessel is proven, it's in use. Um, it's available for purchase today from Singapore. You can buy it for 17 to $19 million for the bare non-ITAR without weapons and have it delivered in 12 months from the yard there. But equally as such, we can license this and that's part of our model is to license these vessels uh, and we can license them to other shipyards. 
We also will offer the training to teach the crews how to operate them. We'll do the maintenance on them. And then ultimately, if a Navy or someone wanted to, we can look at leasing these to them. I want to talk about one more aspect, which is you're not, you don't have a shipyard. Correct. You're, you're offering to build this where, where the customer wants. Explain your concept here. So it, it's a little bit like these modules, right, that we have. And I'll hold this up as SH Defense. Um, they partner with a lot of different companies to deliver a quality solution. They don't make the whole thing, right? But they partner with people to do the assembly, the build, things like that. For us, we don't want to be a shipyard. We don't want to be that. But what we do is we do design integration work. We will evolve these boats to the need, again, keeping in check. But in order to build in a yard, if we license it out, we're not just hands off once we license it out. We want to be involved with the yard. We want to make sure the delivery goes the right way. We want to make sure the training goes well. And when that plank crew comes on board, they know how to operate the boat. Ideally, we've been there all the way through from cradle to grave on these vessels. So it's not just sign and here's the design and walk away. We're hands-on to help the shipyard deliver the vessels effectively, just like you would in the commercial world for oil and gas or renewables. Well, it's a very interesting concept. Of course, it's an interesting craft. Um, I, I wish you luck with your new venture. We've been talking to Bo Jardine. He's the CEO of a new company based in the U.S., Eureka Naval Craft.